Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Minitab. This screencast covers section 10.6, Introduction to Parametric ANOVA, including section 10.11, Two-way Parametric ANOVA with Equal Replicates, section 10.12, Two Keys Test following a Parametric Two-way ANOVA, and section 10.13, Two-way Parametric ANOVA with Unequal Replicates. This test asks how two categorical variables, term factors, affect a single dependent variable, often called the response variable, in statistical packages. The null hypothesis states that the factors have no effect and that all samples belong to the same statistical population. So why not do two one-way ANOVAs? Well, apart from the fact that the more data you have in a test, the better the model the program can produce, the two-way ANOVA allows us to ask if there's any interaction between the factors. That is, do the factors have a greater effect when combined than we might expect from simply summing their individual effects? For example, Table 10.14 gives the fresh way to two varieties of Cosmos atrosanguineus called Pip and Christopher, grown in one of four types of compost, eight weeks post-weaning from a tissue culture environment. The questions we can ask are whether any of the compost promotes superior height growth of the Cosmos variety in general, whether either of these varieties is more successful in making the transition from the tissue culture environment to the greenhouse as measured by height, and finally, do the two varieties do better on different composts? This last question asks if an interaction occurs between the variety and compost type. The two-way ANOVA test implemented by most programs is reliable with samples that have both equal and unequal replicates, as found with the data in Table 10.19, providing, however, the variances are similar that is, homogeneous. Samples with unequal variances are most likely to occur with samples with unequal replicates. We can test if the variances are homogeneous by doing a version of the F-test, first on the data within the program. See Chapter 10 in the book and Box 10.7 for further details. If you get a significant result from the ANOVA, you may then wish to work out which of the samples are significantly different from each other. Some programs will give you the option of performing these so-called post-hoc tests on the effect of individual factors and the interaction. So let's do the test. As you can see, I've already entered the data from table 10.14 into Minitab. Column 1 contains the height of the plants, and column C2 the compost, and column C3 the variety. First of all, I need to test for the homogeneity of the variances. To do this, I'm going to track up to Stat, and click down to ANOVA and then across to the sub menu that appears and down to test for equal variances. The box in the top right hand corner states response data in one column for all factor levels and this is how I have formatted my data. I now need to enter the response variable, click in the box if it's not already selected, I'm going to select height which is my response variable and then select it using the selection button. The cursor now moves to the factor window. I need to enter my factors. The first one is compost, which I select, and click the select button, and the second one variety, which I select, and again press the selection button. I now press OK. Minitab gives me a p-value for two tests, the multiple comparisons test and the Levine test. What do the p-values mean? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. We can see that both of our p-values are greater than our 0.05 transition value. This suggests that there is not a significant difference between the variances of our data, and we can now proceed with the ANOVA test. If, however, these values did not agree, and one did suggest there was a significant difference, I suggest you consult the Minitab help, as they have some useful advice on this subject. Now let's do the two-way ANOVA. We track up to STAT, and click down to ANOVA, the sub-menu appears, and I'm now going to select General Linear Model, and a second sub-menu appears. Click on Fit General Linear Model. First, we have to enter our response variable. I'm going to click in the response variable box, select Height, and then enter it using the selection button. I now have to enter our factors. I'm going to click in the factor box, select Compost, enter it using the selection button, then select Variety, and enter that in the factor box too. I now need to choose the model I'm going to use. This will tell Minitab which factors and interactions I want to analyse. I'm going to click on the Model button. 
Minitab has already put compost and variety in the bottom box terms of the models. I also wish to investigate the interaction between these two factors. I do this by clicking on compost to select it in the top box. I click on variety while holding down the control key to select both of them. The interactions through order is two and I click add. As you can see, a new term, compost times variety, has been added. The star sign indicates that we're going to be looking at the interaction between compost and variety. I now click OK. Let's now run the test by clicking OK in the test window. Minitab gives us many results, but the results table I'm particularly interested in is the analysis of variance table. As you can see, it lists p-values for compost, variety and the compost variety interaction. We can see for compost the p-value is 0.285. This is above our 0.05 transition value. We can therefore conclude that there is no significant difference between the heights of the plants grown in the four different composts. However, the p-value for variety is so small it does not even figure in the first three decimal places of the probability value. This is obviously a very significant result. So we conclude that there is a difference in the height of plants based on variety. The compost variety interaction p-value is 0.068, just above our 0.05 transition value. This is a non-significant result. Therefore, there is not an interaction effect on height due to the specific compost variety combinations. Thus, our only significant result is variety. And there is little point in doing a post hoc test on this, since there are only two levels to the factor. But if you had to do post hoc tests, this is how you would do it. You would track up to stat, click, down to ANOVA, across to the submenu that appears and down to general linear model, across to the second submenu and down to comparisons and click. You can see that Minitab has already selected the two key method, which is our preferred method. In the choose terms for comparisons box, it has the factors compost and variety and the interaction compost times variety. I need to select which ones of those I would like to do my tests on. Even though there's little point in doing tests on any of them, I'm going to select all of them. You do this by double clicking on each and you will see that a capital C appears in the left hand side. I'm now going to press OK. Here are the results for the two keys test for compost. As you can see it states that means that do not share a letter are significantly different. In this case, all the composts share the grouping letter A, confirming that they are not significantly different from each other. If we scroll down, we find the two keys test for variety. Again, means that do not share a letter are significantly different. Here we can see that Pip is in grouping A and Christopher in grouping B. This confirms that they are significantly different from each other. Finally, we can scroll down to the two keys information for the interaction. This is quite a large table because there are many different interactions. As we can see, there are combinations such as compost B and PIP in grouping A that are in a different group from compost B Christopher which is in grouping C. However, from the ANOVA test already we know that there is no significant difference and any differences in groupings here are meaningless. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.